All right. I am so excited to be here with my good friend, John Rulin. John, how are you doing? I'm great, man. This, uh, this is a long time coming, brother. I'm so pumped that you have, uh, have a show and a book and do this whole platform. So thanks for having me on. Well, it's been fun and it's, you know, you're, you've got a very special place in my heart, obviously being a longtime friend. I mean, we've been friends now for, you know, 20 plus years, but um, one of the, I mean, of, of all the people that have suggested over the years that I should write a book, you are one of the strongest voices in my corner. And I just want to honor you and thank you for really giving me the push because you nudged several times at the right time, sometimes at the wrong time early on when I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't there, I wasn't ready, but I mean, you nudged at the right times too. And nudge, I, shoved, headlock. <laughs> I did, I did whatever was, was necessary, dude, to, to make you realize the genius that you had to share with the world. So I'm glad, you know, you finally relented. Well, I, I appreciate that. And man, we have had some fun and it was cool because I uh, had the luxury of being along for the ride for your book. And uh, seeing the very first copy of your book, holding that in my hands. I read, I don't know how many people got a chance to read it, but I read the original book, uh, your first book ever printed. Uh, and, and that was, you know, kind of my uh, introduction into formally what is now Giftology. Yeah, no, it was five years ago in June and it'll be five years. So it's, uh, and the first ones were like either handmade the hardcovers or the the paperbacks, which now are like outlawed. I don't even print them anymore because I hate paperbacks. But uh, yeah, man, you were one of the first. I think you bought like a hundred copies and started sending them out to people. And um, yeah, man, it's uh, it's it's evolved a lot over the last five years. But you were in the you were in the corner, uh, you know, right at first. So super grateful. Friends support and friends. And when someone's got a great idea, you just you have to get it out to the world and you got to help support them and you know, that's exactly what happened. And it's really been neat watching your career because we have known each other for quite some time. Um, our wives are wonderful friends. They talk probably most days of the week. Yeah. And, um, and so, you know, it's fun getting, you know, a little bit of insight from them on what's going on, their perspective. And, uh, and so when you and I, we catch up, you know, it's always so fun, but we have just such a unique history. We have the perspective of being good friends, but then we have the perspective of uh, having worked together in Cutco and having um, really built some cool things and networked together. And today, just it's been so fun just sharing contacts that we know would be beneficial uh, for each other to, you know, just kind of connect with, do life with, do business with. Yeah, no, it's been, uh, yeah, the cross pollination. And I mean, as you've evolved into other arenas to be able to show up at conferences together and recommend each other for masterminds and go to bat for each other and send books to, you know, other contacts and clients. And dude, it's, um, it's been fun. But, you know, it's what I was hoping for all along. I was like, when I said, hey, you should join EO or YPO or something like this, you're like, yeah, 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 that's maybe someday. And now, dude, you're like in Tiger 21, you're, you know, like all of these amazing groups um, and some of them I'm not even in. And so it's fun to be able to, to have people that are in your corner in other rooms when you're not able to be there advocating for you. I mean, that's what we all need, right, is we need strong wingmen um, to raise us up and open doors that we can't sometimes walk through ourselves. So, um, dude, it's been fun. Yeah, there, there's no doubt. And, you know, it's interesting because in different seasons of our life, we can be, or at least I can be ultra focused, you know, just total tunnel vision on whatever the one thing is, some outcome, some rock, some uh, goal that I want to accomplish so much so that I can put the blinders on and not see anything else and sometimes not even see the bigger picture, right? Because maybe my goal is too small or what I'm pursuing uh, is, is just, um, you know, too much of a short-term focus. And so it's, it's been neat just uh, kind of networking in these different groups. And you and I, we share something in common. And that is that uh, we collect relationships. People ask me all the time, well, you know, what do you collect? And there's not a whole lot of stuff I like to collect. Um, I like to collect relationships because I just love people. I like to collect experiences with those relationships. 
And yeah. you are very much the same way in that. And you have unbelievable relationships and uh, you're a master networker. And I'd love to know your thoughts on that. Yeah, well, I think, yeah, a lot of people like to collect wine and I like wine and I like bourbon. And I like good food and I like driving nice cars, but I don't need to own a lot of those things. Like I'm not a stuff person, ironically, because I sell tangible gifts. It's kind of like a, like really? And it's like, well, the reason I got into gifting to begin with was because I was an introvert and I wanted to engage these relationships and I use gifting as kind of that leverage point or tool. But words of affirmation is my love language. So I love being with people and I, I love you know, the, the reciprocation of, of words of affirmation. And so to me, like betting, I, instead of betting on blackjack, I'd, I'd like to bet on people early on and find the diamonds in the rough and find, you know, our mutual friend, Hal Elrod and like go to bat for him early on or find other people that are like, Hey, like you, like, I'm like, you need to get your book out. Like, dude, like, get it out, like find the people and nudge them or push them out of the nest to me, that's way more fun is to bet on people or, or to your point, to collect relationships. Like, you know, I, I forget who the original person to quote this was. I'm not, I'm not the originator of it, but your, your network is your net worth. And I think that, um, you know, having the right people in your corner that will take your phone call, that respect you, that will go to bat for you, like, cause we're all going to have ups and downs in our business and our lives and not to have the people that are around you to have your back. Uh, when your back's against the wall, to me is like one of those places I never want to be, you know, I want to have dug my well before I'm thirsty. I want to have like people that want to go to bat because, you know, who knows what life is going to throw at us. No kidding. And, you know, my, my 10th commandment really kind of zones in on this, the power of your peer group, the power of coaches and mentors, people that have done what you want to do people that are currently doing what you want to do and people that just play the game of life at a bigger level, play the game of business at a bigger level, play the game of finances and investing uh, at a higher level or the game of lifestyle, even just fun and experiences at a higher level. I mean, that is where I just feel like passion just kind of pours out uh, for me, and generally for most other people as well. And I know you can relate because you're part of all these really cool groups. You're part of a ton of masterminds and you have a lot of cool experiences and you have worked really hard to intentionally put yourself in a position to meet people and to know people and connect. And it's really been cool to see as a fan from the sidelines. Yeah, man. Well, you're the same way. I mean, one of the groups that I helped organize, the Selfless Givers, like, came out of me and John Hall and a couple guys getting together virtually. And then, um, you know, we got together once in person and then I started, we, I put together an email list and sent it out and then Kaiser kind of organized it. And you were one of the ones that got involved with that group as well. And just, unfortunately I had a conflict, so I couldn't go to Cabo, but the amount of people that were like, Justin was the highlight of the entire trip. He was the one that showed up and was like fun and up for anything. And like, poured out like all this knowledge of like, you know, deal flow and what he's up to. And like, he was, you know, rocking the speedo and doing crazy stuff that like, you know, like would just make people feel comfortable and laugh and enjoy themselves. And the amount of people that text me and are like, dude, you're close with Justin, right? I'm like, yeah, I've known him for 20 years. He's like, he was not the same person like on zoom that he was in person. Like he's way funner, way cooler. Like hey, he's a cool guy on zoom, but like, he was like a hundred times better. And so I, I think that there's a specialness that you have, you know, that's why you've been pushing me to be in Austin is like, there's power with proximity. There's power with being able to be with these groups. And I've always done it from afar where I'll show up for the event and then go back home. But I think that surrounding yourself with the right peer group and the right people is, you know, is a lot of success. It just rubs off on you. It raises your game. It influences your thoughts and things that you can't even really describe or, or really put into words. Yeah, there, there is no doubt that proximity is power. I remember Tony Robbins saying that once. And by the way, that is part of the reason that we moved. It's a, a huge part of the reason that we moved to Austin. And of course, uh, we are strongly encouraging the Rulins to move to Austin, uh, as you have had many a full court press from me. Uh, so 
<laughs> That's an understatement. As, as we're sitting, you know, with only a towel on in the sauna, it's uh, that's an awkward full court press. But yes, you've let me know many times, like, dude, what are you waiting for? Like, why are you holding back? I'm like, well, you know, Austin's not an easy market to get into right now um, since COVID hit. So, um, so we rented for five months and got to hang out uh, a lot over five months, but uh, still working on the, uh, the permanent resident side. Yeah, well, we can't wait for it to be in Austin. So that's super cool. Uh, just let me know when that's going to happen. And, uh, you know, in, in general, you know, there, there's just so much that I love about where you are in life, this chapter that you're in, because you have gone from a high level salesperson to a very differentiated specialist in the gifting space to investing in companies and helping turn companies around. And it's been really fun to watch. And I'd love to hear just kind of some of that story, what, what that looks like, what some of these new adventures and endeavors that you've embarked on in this current season of your life are. Yeah. Well, yeah, things, I mean, things started with, you know, with selling knives, which we both did. And then creating the corporate gifting program for Cutco and kind of building a business, basically a gifting agency, which we still own. That's still a core part of our income is, you know, the done for you service on the gifting side. But I think I, I learned early on, even when I was selling the knives, I was like, I didn't really want to be a knife salesperson. I wanted to have a business. I was going to use the knives as the delivery vehicle for the emotion. And, you know, to this day, we still do millions of dollars in the silly knives because it connects with people there. It's, it's a unique gift. It's whether it's pro sports teams or whatever else. But I learned early on, I, I didn't want to be pigeonholed into just one thing. And you're building all these relationships. It was like, really, gifting was my currency. It was really about the relationships. And, and even the clients that we now have, like, they have more needs than just gifting. In fact, gifting might be number seven on the list. But if you can help them use gifts to get more referrals or more deal flow or more uh, loyalty from their employees or whatever their pain point is, that's what they really care about is the results. And I realized that like, I wanted to expand beyond gifting and use gifting as a way to, as a delivery vehicle to open these other doors to invest in businesses. And so I was fortunate. I sold half the business to Rod, my business partner, owns half of Giftology and really everything that we do now. And his background, ironically enough, was in doing business turnarounds. So we, he had excess capacity um, and he was like, I'm, I'm going to pick up a couple of clients from referrals from lawyers and bankers. And then we realized like, Rod, you're doing all this amazing stuff for these guys. Why don't, like, we should not just get a retainer. Let's get a percentage of upside. Like, like any business owner, if you can grow their profit and you're going to say, hey, I'm going to take most of my upside as profit in a percentage of profit. Every business owner loves that. And a lot of business owners want to exit. So we said, why don't we take some phantom equity, some stock, five to 10%, if they, if we hit these targets and if they have a liquidity event. They don't ever pay anything out unless they sell. And so that's like over time, we just realized we're adding this value. How do we structure the deals in, su in a, such a way that they get the result that they want and we get the result that we want? And so that's, that's been fun to see. We've had like three exits over the last four years. Um, nothing crazy. I mean, most of the businesses that we're doing are in that, you know, five to $20 million range in sales. So they're not like, you know, we're not selling egg, you know, we're not selling like Uber or DoorDash, but one of the companies that we started out with that was small that you're aware of is a company that started out in fulfillment and then realized the technology that they built was actually more applicable in the e-com space for everybody else. And that company actually has a nine or 10 figure exit potential. And we own a, you know, we're the third largest shareholder of that company. Um, and so that, but that came from long-term, long game relationship building. We had that client for five years before some of that st stuff started to matriculate. And so, so many people, I think, say they play the long game of these deals and opportunities, but most people are playing it in days, not decades. And I think you and I have both seen the results of pouring into people and doing deals as such that allow for people to win, everybody to win, and so that they want to come back and do more deals with you. And so a lot of our focus right now is, yeah, we want to grow the giftology brand and, you know, speak and whatever else that's cool, but really our long game and our big picture, like where we'll have like the grand slams, um, are going to come from investing in deal flow and investing in the companies that we're, 
partnering with or getting advisory shares because people are coming to us saying, hey, we love your platform. We want your advice. And so that's been some of the fun of saying like, hey, we have this. People are like, oh, you're still doing the little gifting thing. And I laugh. I'm like, yeah, still doing the gifting, the knife thing. Because they have no idea. They, they might have lost track of us and didn't realize that we've actually, you know, gone into these other arenas. And yeah, it's, you know, we're not Google, but we have done some fun things on some fun levels. Yeah, there's no doubt. And, and I know that we can't get into a whole lot of details of this company, but I'm also thrilled about said company because there's so much opportunity just with, you know, agreements in place currently with contracts that are already structured with the ability to expand some of these contracts. I mean, it's, the upside is really exciting and could just be incredible game changer type of incredible results. Uh, and it's such a smart solution in the e-commerce space and in, you know, fulfillment in general. I mean, you're, you're taking in many cases, entrepreneurs that their biggest pain point is figuring out all the third party logistics and, and it is incredibly challenging. And, and then when you have multiple platforms that you're on, it enhances and really it exponentially increases the complexities. And you have this one stop shop that can solve all these solutions for an entrepreneur. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah it's like shop. It's like what I mean, when Shopify came out, people are like, Oh, that's not gonna work. Like that's never and then they did but Shopify was for small companies. What Shopify was for small companies, this software and backend platform is, is for mid to large companies. Like how do you, you know, how do you deal with 40 marketplaces? Like it's one thing to sell on Amazon, which is great because it's 50% of internet sales, but there's another 50%, which is eBay and overstock and overseas and all these other things. And most companies don't have the sophistication or the bandwidth to say, Hey, like Amazon's great, but I can't bet everything on Amazon because Amazon could change the al algorithm or they could compete with you the next day. Like Amazon is amazing and ruthless all at the same time. So like having diversity and even the direct to consumer brands that want to grow. So like, yeah, I mean, I couldn't be like in 20 years, it's one of the most exciting things I've ever been a part of. It's funny, like when like one, one bet um, could dwarf what I did in two decades, but that's the beauty of technology. And that's the beauty of being in the right rooms. And that's the beauty of of betting on the right horse uh, and the right jockey. Um, and so, yeah, it's been, some of these deals have been a lot of fun. And there's so much opportunity, even just internationally, you know, you have all these companies that want to get into the U S or you have companies in the U S that want to get overseas. And so uh, the opportunities are really endless. And I, I wish we could give more of a formal plug here uh, and, and, you know, do some, do some help for, uh, uh, for the group. Yeah. yeah It'll be a follow-up interview. Yeah, it'll be a thought with the leadership. You, you can talk directly to the horses you know, that are actually leading the company. I just get to play, you know, Mr. Connector and open a few, you know, key doors, but I'm not in the day to day grind of executing. But but yeah, I mean, it's it's um, it's it's a brand that people are going to know, you know, in the next couple of years. That's for sure. If you're in the e-com space. That's awesome. Well, I'm excited that you're involved in it. And uh, I have the luxury of also uh, uh, being an investor in, in uh, this company. And I am so excited about the direction that it's headed. And a lot of people in my mastermind are also very excited about this and the opportunity uh, to yeah. invest. Yeah. Awesome. So um, I'd love to know a lot of, a lot of people probably don't realize the scale and the magnitude of the relationships that you have, the clients that you have. I'd love to hear some of your high profile clients that use you and Giftology for solutions in the gifting space. Yeah, well, most of the people that, whether it's a solopreneur who may, might be a big speaker or whatever else that has, maybe it's their event planners or their speaking clients or their consulting clients, all the way up to the Chicago Cubs, and for them, it's not the players. You think, oh, they're going to give it to the players. Like the players get stuff all the time. It's like, it's the sweet owners. It's the CMOs of Pepsi. It's the people that are spending lots of money at those, you know, those ballparks. Anybody that has high value relationships, whether that's with their employees, their investors, their mentors. And so if you look in like, in, you know, home building, 
You know, like we've worked with DR Horton, the largest home builder in the country. Well, who'd they buy it for? Ironically, they bought it for all of their suppliers, which is weird. People are like, why would you buy a gift for people that you're spending millions of dollars with? Well, if you want their best ideas, you want their best service and you want their, their you know, for it to be a true partnership, you should be buying gifts for your suppliers. And that's an example. Somebody else that, you know, that uses our services, um, you know, is Jesse Itzler. Um, and we just got a chance to meet his wife and spend some time with Sarah Blakely, who owns Spanx. They're both like billionaires in their own right. But, you know, we landed that relationship through EO. I was on a committee of helping organize speakers. We had a few hundred thousand dollar budget to bring in some of the top speakers. And so it was like Darren Hardy and Jocko and these guys. But I got to build the relationship with Jesse. And he's a relationship guy. Well, I opened up, I think I booked him for like four different speaking gigs. And uh, I'm like, I'm going to be your agent. And he read Giftology. And he's like, man, I want to start doing like, this is who I am. Like I've used gifts my whole life to get access to people and to appreciate people and to get referrals. And he's like, so he brings us on, you know, his big mastermind with thousands of people. And of course, it's all walks of life. And now we're talking to a Fortune 50 company, who's one of the largest in financial services and insurance, about keynoting their top event. So we work, people are like, does this work in technology? When I spoke to Google and I laughed, I said, are there human beings here? And they said, well, well, yeah. And I said, well, then it works. What people don't understand is it's not about the gift, it's about the relationship. Because every business rises and falls on relationships. And most people suck at showing gratitude to even their spouse let alone scaling that thoughtfulness to all of their employees. Most people, it's like, hey, here's a, you know, you've worked with us for five years. Here's your gift card. Go buy your own gift. And that's not a gift. That's basically an obligation. It's embarrassing. Like, hey, you just put in 10,000 hours with us. Go buy your own $50 gift. Like, really? I buy a nicer gift for my interns that don't even work for me officially yet because I want to recruit them. I want them to show up excited to work for Giftology. So a lot of the industries that we're in are ones that have, you know, margin. They tend to be B2B, but the clients that we love to work with tend to be privately owned because sometimes the publicly traded companies are like, oh, we, you know, they're just managing quarter to quarter and you're dealing with a middle, you know, a marketing manager somewhere. Whereas the entrepreneur that might be running a 20 million or 50 million or hundred million dollar company, it's their name on the line and they understand that they built their whole business on relationships and they better show up for those people, not with another dinner or golf outing around, you know, like ball game tickets, all the same crap everybody else is doing. They better show up differently for those relationships and they better invest in those relationships as if they were taking them out to a dinner in Vegas and spending a thousand bucks. And that, so the, the, all of our, our industries, oil and gas, insurance, you know, they're, it's not about the industry. It's about the mindset of the leader of that division or of that company saying, you know what, I need to be different than everybody else. And I need to appreciate these people or else I'm not going to have them. Yeah. You know, there's so much that I've learned from you and you just outlined a lot of great things about gifting and, and how to do it right. And, and what to do in general. I think some of the big takeaways that I've had over the years uh, one of them is to include their spouse in, in the gifting process in some way, shape, or form. And I think that is brilliant. Another thing that I've learned from you is avoid consumables because once they're gone, that gift is not remembered. And so it's better to have something that stays for a long time that is memorable, um, that gets use, that gets frequent use. Uh, I, another one that um, that I learned from you that I think is uh, incredible. And by the way, I've learned so many different ideas, but this one I thought was really brilliant as well. And that's don't gift at the time that they're expecting it or that other people gift, but gift at times where it's unexpected. And so it lands better. And so I, I'd love for you to share any of your other strategies that are really important on the gifting front. Yeah. So what I would say is that, um, most people, when they're gifting, they start with the what. They want to start with cool, sexy. And guys are the worst at this because we shop with our eyes. We're like, hey, we want a piece of technology or I like steaks, so I'm going to send steaks or I love wine and cigars or golf. We're going to send everybody Pro V1s. We're going to send everybody like Opus One. And it's, it ends up not landing because it's all about them. It's all about what they want. And the what is the seventh step. If you look at our recipe, of how we're putting together a, a relationship plan for somebody, the what is the last step. 
the who is way more important than the what. And so as we're walking through, it's like, who are your top 100 relationships or your top 1,000? What is the value of those relationships? Most people, when they're investing in, in business, they're like, hey, I want to invest $100,000 and I want to get this return on investment, you know, internal rate of return or over five years, I want to get this. Relationships are the same way. You should be taking a percentage of your profit. And it's to say each of your relationships is worth $50,000 in profit. You should be reinvesting 5 to 15% of your net profit back into that relationship to keep them, to grow them. Hopefully you cross sell or upsell or, you know, grow with them. And then the secret sauce is, you know, if you can get that person to go advocate and sell on your behalf and duplicate themselves, whether it's in a, as an investor, bringing in other investors, or if it's an employee recruiting their family and friends to come work with you, like there should, it should be a math equation. And most people gifting is this like obligatory woo woo warm fuzzy thing you check the box because it's a five year anniversary or you check the box because it's Christmas. And if you only show up for your wife or your husband on anniversaries birthdays and Christmas like those are table stakes times like you don't earn brownie points like that's expected. But if you can show up the timing of it showing up to your point. I, I call it just because gifting or we call it planned randomness like laying out like two to four times a year, I'm just going to love on this person. Whether that's your spouse, if you just show up on random Tuesdays and say, hey, honey, I booked a spa for you, like kids are taking care of go, you earn a million times more brownie points. Same with a client. If you do only do gifts after deals are done or after referrals are given, those are like, you say you're in the relationship business, when are you giving gifts? When are you loving on them? At transactional times, you do this, you get this. Whereas if you show up for that relationship, that client, that investor, that employee, just because the exponential value of that goes up because they're like, wow, they did this because they wanted to, not because they had to. So that whole recipe process, so many people are like, John, I did giftology. We have a swag budget. It, yeah, who cares? We cut it. When the, when, the, when the chips are down, we cut it. And I'm like, that's, that's interesting. Are you doing giftology? And they're like, well, we're doing giftology-ish. And I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, let me tell you, if you decide to bake bread 100,000 times and each time you don't put in yeast, guess, guess what you don't get any of those times? You don't get bread. You get matzah, you don't get bread. So the little things in relationships, it's the handwritten note, it's the timing, it's all of that makes the difference. And so if your tribe wants to go download our entire recipe, like our entire playbook of what we take the Cubs through or Google or anybody else, they can go do it on their own. If they hire us to walk them through, it, it's going to cost thousands or tens of thousands, but they can do it on their own for free. You go to Giftology system and literally like our step-by-step -step of who, when, how much, what, all of that's there because most people will take it and they'll be like, wow, they'll, they'll download everything. They'll get all the relationships and then they go to do it and they're like, oh my gosh, it takes a lot of energy and effort to play Santa Claus year round to actually do this well and not cut corners. It's not rocket science. All the recipes there, but it's like, Man, if you miss one little detail, you could actually spend money to damage a relationship. And that happens all the time and people don't realize it. Like slamming your logo on something and thinking it's a gift, that's a manipulation. People do it all the time. They send Tiffany stuff and Rolexes with their logo on it. And the person gets it's like, you honestly think I'm going to use this Tiffany's vase out with all of my clients? That's the tackiest thing in the world. But, but it's been taught for decades as branding and marketing. So the, 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 what we walk people through, so many times people push back and like, I don't like the knives. I'm like, the gift isn't for you. I don't, I want to put my logo on. I'm like, the gift isn't for you. I don't want to, I don't want to handwrite the notes. I'm like, then it's automated and it won't land. It won't feel personal. Do you want this to, to create results? Or are you just trying to check a box? And so after they walk through the process, they're like, crap, like this is actually a strategy. This isn't just an expense. And that's what flips the, the like, if everybody was good at this, it would be like noise, but because people suck at this so bad and when they show up for people this way, like oftentimes they're moved to tears and that doesn't happen in business very often unless you really connect with somebody's heart. And that doesn't happen by just outsourcing it and not following the details. That's powerful. And what a wealth of information and knowledge to be able to apply to strengthen and just enhance relationships. I, I just think this is wonderful. Now, it does cause me some concern because you have such a high bar 
uh, now, you know, what do you have to do to make sure that your wife's feeling loved? I mean, she knows you're the gifting expert, right? I mean, goodness sakes, you got to really deliver now. I paint myself into a corner all the freaking time. It's uh, <laughs> Lindsay, as, uh, as anybody that knows my wife knows, is um, she keeps me honest, she keeps me classy, and she keeps me humble because she will tell me if I knock it out of the park and she'll also tell me if, if, uh, if you know, if I was doing giftology ish, um, she, she'll be the first to call out like BS, uh, and have no problem doing so. But I, you know, if you talk to her, like she'll tell you like, Hey, John nailed, like this was amazing. This was over the top. Eh, this one was a base hit. Um, so uh, it's good to have some good accountability. That's for uh, sure. Amen. And and I can tell you, I am uh, a recipient of at least several of the, the gifting ideas and strategies that you use. And I think they're incredible. You know, I, I, I don't want to give away, you know, any of the goods here, but, uh, you know, I recently received an item that had a heartfelt message uh, that was personalized with a video and the artifact mug. Yes. You can talk about it. Yeah. The artifact mug is just such a cool um, experience and such a cool uh, idea for a gift, something that's really powerful. And it's something that is going to be used frequently, which is one of your tenants. Uh, so yeah. I think that that's awesome. And then I've also been the recipient of, of attending events that you've thrown uh, whether at your house or renting out a restaurant or, you know, doing something at one of our mutual favorite places, Cleveland Heath. And, you know, you just do such a great job. So I just want to give you that praise and, and let all of our listeners and those of you watching just know how great of a job John does. I mean, he really is the professional of all professionals and the expert in the gifting space. Well, it's my team of giftologists. I get the credit for being the, the poster boy and the ambassador, but you don't want me handling the details. But I will say like the mug is one of my favorite. And it used to be the thing I made fun of the most, like the corporate coffee mug. People are like, really? Like mugs are your number one thing. And I'm like, well, this is a thousand dollar mug. And the reason it's a thousand bucks is it's carved into it is somebody's life story, legacy, family, tragedy, overcome, fate, like core values. It's like, it's almost like a lifetime achievement award put into a functional piece of art. And so like I've had mentors that have gotten them, that I've sent them to, I've sent probably 130 of these over the last three years. To, and, and there's like, John, this is more valuable to me and more impactful than my $50,000 watch. The watch could be replaced. If I got, if had a house fire or whatever else, like this is something that's irreplaceable because of what it means. And it reminds me of you. It reminds me of my values. It reminds me of my why. And so and most people drink coffee or tea every day. So like when people are like, John, are you just advocating for spending stupid money on people and, and bribing them? And I'm like, it's the exact opposite of that. Like the $30,000 Louis Vuitton bag, like that makes people feel uncomfortable sometimes when they get something like that. Cause they're like, why wow, you're not really trying to buy me a thoughtful gift. You're trying to buy my loyalty. But when you do what we're talking about, it's, it's not swag. It's not promotional products. That's not a gift. That's a promotional product. But a bribe isn't a gift either. A bribe is a bribe. It's you're trying to manipulate. So if you can come in the middle, most of the things that we're talking about are a few hundred dollars per gift up to a few thousand at the most. And so I'll, I'll push people towards a thousand dollar mug that tells somebody's life story that makes them ball like a baby when they get it, even billionaires. And versus a $10,000 watch, you spend 90% less and you have a hundred times more impact. That's a good math equation. That's a good investment. And so many times people misunderstand. They think I'm playing on the bribe side or on the trinket side. And really we're towing the line in that, that, you know, that tension in the middle. And when you do it really well, like guys like you could buy whatever you want. Like you're literally like, but you're not a stuff guy, but you could if you wanted to. And so the idea of, of giving you something that's thoughtful and meaningful and that hits your heart, that's how you win somebody over. Hit somebody's spouse's heart and their kid's heart. That's how you win somebody over is being more thoughtful. And it's not like people will give the excuse, oh, John, it's the thought that counts. I, you know, I, I sent Amazon gift cards, it's a thought that counts. I'm like, that's BS, that's lame. That's a weak ass excuse to give a weak gift. It's the thoughtful thought that counts. It's, and, and so, and you feel that when somebody has put energy and effort into something or they've just kind of like mailed it in. And that's what we're talking about. It's like, if, you, if relationships matter, then show up. Show up the same way you do your fantasy football league. Show up the same way you show up to your marketing planning meeting or your financial meeting. Like show up for people. 
And if you show up for people, they feel it and they will advocate for you. They'll run through walls for you. If you show up like everybody else, you're just like the noise, you're, you're mediocre masses. And I don't want to be that. And I know you don't want to be that. And most people don't. They just don't realize what they're communicating when they give crappy swag and trinkets to their most valuable relationships. You're basically communicating, go advertise for me. I want to manipulate you and you don't matter. Mm. It's not a good use of capital to do that and communicate that in mass to people. Yeah, that's powerful. And I mean, it gets to the point that it, it makes sense. Like I'd rather a heartfelt letter note than 100%. just to get a, you know, gift card for somewhere for something. I mean, I literally have, I, I mean, I could probably dig up right here on my desk, like a pile of gift cards. I, I mean, I literally, I do. I, I literally have like a pile of gift cards. Um, it's, it's the worst. It's one of the top 10 worst. Like when, when somebody downloads our system, one of the things we send them, even if they're going to do it on their own is like avoid these 10 gifts. Now there's always anomalies. There's always an, a, a you know, any of them could be a good gift if you did it the right way. But in general, 99% of the time and gift cards are towards the top. It's like, here's a piece of plastic. I didn't know you well enough. Or I didn't care about you enough. Go buy your own gift, but you have to shop at this store. Like it's, it's a gift guilt. It's obligation. It's like the worst. And most of them, A, they don't get used. They get lost or put in the back of a desk drawer. Or if they do, they're like used and, be, and they forget where they even came from because people do have that stack. And it's like, you want to talk about one of the weakest gifts on the planet. It's the gift card. It's the worst. It's literally on my desk to remind me that I should probably use it. And I still don't even look at that stack. It's, it's kind of hysterical. Um, but it's bad on so many levels, man. It, it, to, to, to your point, the note, people will say, John, I can't do a gift. I can't afford it. I'm like, well, in college, I afforded $500 a month on gifts. So you're weak. Late. I don't care what size business you have. This applies. Maybe it's $2,500 a month, six grand a year. Instead of like buying beer and whatever else, like you could afford to do this. But people that say like, I could never afford it. Or my, I have a client that I can, I'm, I'm not allowed, but it's the Department of Defense, it's Walmart. I'm like, A, most people can receive a gift. If they can receive a dinner or go to the Super Bowl, they can get a gift. You're just being cheap. You're just using that as an excuse. But if it is like, you can't buy them a cup of coffee, a handwritten letter that's really thoughtful is actually more valuable. The reason the mug is valuable is like, it's the handwritten letter on a piece of clay. It's the heartfelt emotion. It's actually what provides the meaning and the context. So if, if for some reason your back's against the corner and you can't afford, which I call BS, or if you're a college kid, or if you're talking to somebody that can't, write them a note. And if you really want to make it special, go read them the note in person. You're likely to cry and they're likely to cry and they will never, they will hold on to that note for the rest of their life. So like what we're talking about isn't spending money. It's really in making wise investments. And in the note to me is part of the secret sauce. It's part of what provides the context that makes it land a certain way. So, you know, hundred times more note over gift card or any of that other crap. I love it. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. I know you're onto something because when you have big brands, like high end, high quality brands that are kind of ripping off your name, your giftology name, uh, it tells you that you're doing some things right. I, I would love to know. I don't know if we're able to get into this, but I thought it might just be a nice place to, you know, clear the air and, and let people know what's going on. But yeah, even Waterford. Yeah. You talk about the Waterford yes. thing. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. sure if I was allowed to say it. So I mean, hey, I, I mean, I could try to go, you know, in court or whatever else, but I was like, it's, it's I will rise above that with our platform and the fact that other people, other yeah, global brands are using the word giftology that way. It may, it tells me that we're onto something. Yeah. And, uh, so and, cool. uh, and it's, you know, to me, I'm not, I'm not really in the crystal business. So I'm like, whatever, like, that's not my favorite gift. You know, if I'm going to do crystal or a artifact mug, I'm going to choose an artifact mug a thousand times over. So let them play their game and I'll put, continue to play my game. Um, so, but I, it is weird when companies that are larger than you are adopting, or even the language, I start, start to see like people in interviews and whatever else they're like adopting some of our phrasing and some of our positioning. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Um, I hope they give credit where it came from. Like, I don't mind somebody using our, our quotes or ideas or whatever else. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but you know, bottom line is if you're, if you're going to, um, 
make an impact, you're probably going to have imitators and you're going to have people that are going to copy or knock you off or, you know, they do it with our course, the ophthalmology course, they'll take it and try to rip it off and, and do different things. And, you know, most of the time we just take the high road because it's like, I'm going to focus on creation and value and building relationships. And, you know, it's like anybody else, like nobody wants to deal with the knockoff. They want to deal with the genuine. So, um, you know, our methodology in some ways we didn't invent it. Like a lot of it's biblical. It's like Proverbs 18, 16, a gift ushers you before Kings. I didn't invent generosity or gratitude, but I, what I think I've done is wrapped it in a certain way and made it easy for people to execute at scale and put a spotlight on these kind of old world, you know, either Christian or biblical or, or old world principles and showing people how like this applies more in 2021 than even it did 2000 years ago, because everything's digital now. And so much is, you know, experiential, but like we still as humans, like want to be honored, we want to be appreciated. And I think we long for that intimacy. So, you know, let people knock it off. I'm going to keep creating and surround myself with guys like you that are going to, you know, like I'm always noodling on what the next thing's going to be. You know, right now we're doing artwork, like for Jesse and Sarah, we did partner with an artist and made, and since he was a rapper and she had Spanx, we made this $25,000 piece of artwork made of thousands of broken records and Spanx packaging that was their, their, it was a family portrait of them and their four kids. You know, most people aren't even going to spend $250 on a gift, let alone 2,500, let alone 25,000. So, uh, you know, plenty of room for haters and imitators or whatever else. I'm going to keep doing my thing and loving on people and, uh, and hopefully some of these brands that are out there that are imitating will eventually, and some of them have, they've reached out to collaborate and to, you know, have us um, be a part of their company and, and whatever else. So, uh, but it is, it is pretty funny. Imitation is the highest form of flattery, right? Yep. And I think that you're seeing that big time. And I just love that picture. I mean, uh, the the artist that created that has such a gift. It is so cool. She's amazing. And there was the, the Kobe Bryant one as well. Right. And yeah, that's going to be unveiled here in the next few weeks where uh, I think it'll sell for, it could sell for a couple hundred grand or maybe even seven figures. It's that it's a nine foot tall piece of Kobe made of thousands of broken records and people that see it from afar, from like 10 feet afar, they're like, oh, is that a watercolor? And then they go up on it and realize it's thousands of these pieces of the record. And so we bought it for 33 grand and we're, um, we donated it um, to Make-A-Wish because that was Kobe's favorite charity. And so the goal is to sell the artwork and then to create NFTs on the blockchain so that people that can't afford a million dollar piece of artwork can still participate at a high level and they'll be able to have a piece of this um, the goal is to sell it for $24, which is Kobe's number. Um, but to kind of take the disadvantage and bring them into the advantage and, and kind of use giftology as the bridge of like, how do you involve people at the highest level and, and create something that's of interest and, and leverage kind of our connections. So, so we've been talking to Kobe's photographer, Andy Bernstein, and a number of other people with, you know, in NBA connections and celebrity connections. And, um, so yeah, it's, uh, it hasn't been unveiled yet. But, uh, but if you Google, uh, it may, you know, by the time this comes out, you may be finding that piece. Um, but that same artist that did the piece for Jesse and Sarah made, um, it was like really her opus because it was like, uh, she was a huge Kobe fan. And when he passed, she was like, I want to do something amazing to honor him and auction this piece off. And then unfortunately her and her husband's car got stolen and she was going to fire sale this thing. And I was like, that's the worst idea on the planet. I'm buying this thing. And we're going to do the opposite. We're going to put a, we're going to take months and put a spotlight on this thing and we're going to blow you up and we're going to honor Kobe and we're going to make, raise money for Make-A-Wish. And she's like, why are you doing that? And I'm like, if you shine the spotlight and love on enough people, the, the reflection of that will eventually come off. And I learned that from John Kane, you know, one of our, you know, mutual friends and, and close friends and advisors. And, um, and so people all the time are like, why are you doing that? I'm like, cause I'm playing the game in decades you know, Vaynerchuk talks about it and he actually does it. Most people don't. Most people are playing it, it you know, that short game that I, three, I want this in three months. It's not how life works. That's awesome. And I mean, both pieces of art are just incredible and I love it. I'm just really pleased to know that you are not gifting 
Waterford's Giftology Collection Crystal Glasses. <laughs> feel really good. <laughs> I don't gift any. I don't gift anything with Giftology on it. Like that's the ironic part. Other than my book, because it's the title. But if you get a gift from me, it'll never. I mean, other than the book, you're not gonna. It's not gonna say Giftology, like because that's not a gift. That's a marketing ploy. That's a tchotchke. That's a even the nicest gift on the planet. You put your logo on it just ruins it so yeah no giftology waterford anytime soon <laughs> well i'll tell you i am just so impressed with all that you've done and i'm excited about some of the collaborations that we've had and some of the gifting that we're going to do together and i couldn't agree more that just a thoughtful well-packaged gift you know if it's going to be a book it should be a hard cover that just pops with some other cool things accompanying it and a nice message and if it's not a book, it should be something thoughtful that is going to be useful, um, that's not going to be consumed and thrown away. And there's just so much that you hit on that is incredible. And I think that everyone listening and watching to this really can benefit from implementing giftology and just uh, the entire strategy that you have really brought into play in this world. So I want to thank you for that. And uh, I just have loved spending time with you here today. Uh, I'm curious if you have any last thoughts that you'd like to share uh, before we let people know where they can learn more about you. Yeah, well, I, I would just say start. I mean, I think like anything, it, it can feel overwhelming. It's like, oh my gosh, I have hundreds of employees or dozens of clients or thousands of whatever. And that can be overwhelming. So like, you know, the goal for us is to get people to start, you know, writing down who those people are. You know, if you, if you do like the five minute journal, write down three names a day for a month, you'll have a hundred people. And start with those, and, and maybe it's not world-class gifts for everybody. Maybe it's a handwritten note for the 10 people that got you to where you're at now, or a mentor, or an advisor, or somebody that poured into you. Um, but the big thing is, is, you know, start, and then start treating it like, you know, it, it, with intention, with, like it's an important priority. And, and so, like, people are like, oh, John, you're the gift guy. You're obviously good at it. I'm like, I was a goat milking farm kid who, like, my love language isn't gifts. So I'm not naturally bent this way. I just had mentors that showed me how important it was and I mimicked them for 20 years. So I got really good at working the gratitude muscle. And so I, what I would say is like start because if relationships are gonna rise and fall your business and your life really, then you better get good at either thinking about it or at least budgeting for it and then partnering with somebody to help make this you know, possible or else somebody else is gonna love on those relationships and take them. I mean, that's just a simple fact, personally or professionally. Like we all need appreciation. We all need honor. We all need gratitude. And most people tend to take their warm market for granted. I already got that person. I already got that investor. I already got that employee working for me. And guess what? When they decide to leave, it's too late. It's too late to say, oh, I want to pay you more. I want to love on you more. I want to appreciate you more. I want to show gratitude. No, game over. So I think that most people wait until it's too late um, before they start showing that gratitude and appreciation. So start today, start small if need be, uh, start walking before you run, but, um, but it's possible and it's important and it's powerful. Um, and I, I challenge everybody, do this for three years, not for three days, not for three months, do it for three years and come back to me. Say, John, you know what? Loving on my relationships and showing gratitude and honoring them and being really thoughtful wasn't worth it. Never had anybody in 20 years came back and said, yeah, I invested all this money in all these people and it screwed me. No, like you, your relationships flourish because that's where you're, you know, that's where you're watering. That's where you're pouring the love on. And it sounds woo woo and cheesy, but at the end of the day, like this is a, this is a strategy for people that want to create, you know, wonderful, massive lives and impact a lot of people. I think that's brilliant. And one of the things that I want to say too, for our listeners and those watching is that this can be really helpful and useful in the context of, you know, business or relationships, you know, maybe it's maybe you are working a job, and this could be a way that you do something kind for the people in your department, the people that are in the department you want to be in your bosses. Uh, maybe this is something if you're a business owner that you're doing for your clients, and you can cherry pick who the best ones are, it could be for prospects. But I'm also going to go out uh, here and say, 
I think that you should consider doing this for people that you just want to bring into your peer group or that you want to have them pull you into their peer group. This is a great way to be intentional and connect with people that you don't have that relationship with yet that you would love to play the game of life and business the way that they do. It doesn't have to be a business relationship. This could be a, hey, I want to, you know, kind of upgrade or, or create some extra depth in my peer group. You know, an upgrade maybe isn't the best word for it. I, I don't mean that we're necessarily leaving people behind, but my intention is to be intentional about who I'm spending my time with. Yeah. And so I think this could be perfect for kind of cultivating and creating, fostering those relationships, which to me are the most important relationships. Who are you, who are the five people you're spending the majority of your time with? Because you're going to think and act like them. You're going to become more like them. And so picking those people wisely and being intentional is so important. And people ask me all the time, they say, Justin, I don't have you know, mentors. I don't have these people that I would like to, you know, have. And for me, it started out with uh, just authors of different books. And then I would eventually meet people. And I, and so I have utilized this, um, but on a much like smaller scale and not with all these principles for a long time ago, before giftology began to at least put myself on people's radar. And that, now learning these skills, I've been a lot better at, intentionally crafting gifts and um, having experiences with people that are really important in my life or people that I would love to be more important in my life or, or to kind of enter their sphere of influence. And so this, I would encourage anyone and everyone checking out this episode to consider for your future, your current and or future peer group. Amen. Yeah. It's it, uh, but play the long game, you know, if you give a gift and then have an expectation, it wasn't a gift, it was a manipulation. Whether it's with your wife or, with, or whether it's with a prospect or an author, you know, Vaynerchuk talked about his book was jab, 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 right hook, which is give, 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 then you earn the right to ask, but you can't expect. You'll ruin it. You'll ruin relationships by giving and then, hey, I sent you a gift, now you got to give me your time. No, I, I gave you a gift. Now maybe you'll be on your radar. Now maybe I'll do something else for you. Maybe I'll open a door. Maybe I'll refer some business. Maybe I'll make a connection. Like it's, you know, there's way different ways to love, but there's no question that if you want to expand your, your influence or expand your, your sphere of influence and who you're running with, like there's, you know, when you show up for people in unique ways and, and they're like, who is this person that's done this crazy thing? Like you do that a few times, they're likely to take your phone call or text or whatever else. It doesn't guarantee anything, but, um, but at least gives you a shot. It gives you a warm crack door which is all a lot of times we're just needing or looking for. John, your message is so powerful. Where can people find you online and learn more about what you're doing? Yeah, I would say, um, I mean, we're on you know, social media, Instagram, they go to at John Rulin, uh, or they go directly to our website, uh, which handles speaking and consulting. And then the done for you gifting agency is at giftologygroup.com. Awesome. Well, I have just thoroughly enjoyed our time. It's always a pleasure getting a chance to hang and just talk about life and talk about cool things and really, you know, just share ideas that have been powerful in our own lives. Uh, and, and one of the things that I like to close every uh, session, every podcast episode that I do with is this, take some form of action today and move towards financial freedom, move towards the life that you desire to live, one built by design, not by default. Thanks for tuning in and we'll check you next week.